Hello, Cuddly Rob Go to Bed here with another visit to my all new Go to Bed World situated right here in Cricklewood, UK. At Go to Bed World, the first attraction to visit is the One Direction Castle. This is where you can meet and greet Prince Niall Horan, Prince Liam Payne, Prince Harry Styles, and Prince Louis Tomlinson, who will all gladly sing a medley of their one hit song. But never fear, earplugs are provided for guests with good musical taste. Viewers may wish to know that the One Direction Castle is built entirely of used Band-Aid adhesive bandages. As we pass through the castle gates, we are now entering Chumbawamba Land, named after the English rock band Chumbawamba Land. There in front of us, you can see the Beatles Carousel, where excited women of all ages can still get to ride on Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, and of course, not forgetting Ringo Starr. While we make our way through Chumbawamba land, here are some interesting facts about Go To Bed World that may be of interest to you. The One Direction Castle can be completely dismantled in under 30 seconds and safely stored in five suitcases if a hurricane is approaching. The replica of the Titanic in Aqualand is in fact the actual one and is in fact not a replica, is not a replica. In 2008, a family of four from Ohio in the United States did actually get lost for 16 days and went feral while trying to find their way out of the Jack the Ripper maze. A chiropodist died during the construction of the Go to Bed World Haunted Pizza Restaurant ride and now haunts it. Rob Go to Bed sometimes dresses up as Captain Zack Crow and runs around in the Pirates of Penzance ride. Another interesting fact is that Go to Bed World opened on the 10th anniversary of the day that Rob Go to Bed was kicked out of the Crickerwood Girl Guides for not being a real girl. All the rooms at the Go to Bed Resort hotels are completely disposable. Yes, to cut down on housekeeping bills, each room is removed by a crane and replaced with a totally new one. So, if you're one of those paranoid people who come back to your room and think, the room has changed, at Go to Bed World, it probably has. Winston Churchill, the ex-British Prime Minister and famous wartime leader, who was cryogenically frozen in 1965, is buried under the flying Nelly the Elephant ride. The old Victorian slums, seen here on the right, with real authentic smells and real bubonic plague, were in fact real Victorian slums with real bubonic plague, which just happened to be within the area that Rob Gotobed had purchased to build Gotobed World. And finally, on the first day that Gotobed World opened, there were eight and a half visitors. On the second day, there were seven. Now, let's take in the ambience of Go To Bed World for a while, while we make our way over to the fairy tale fake news Lazy River Boat Ride. And here we are at the fairy tale fake news Lazy River Boat Ride, which takes us on a water-based adventure to visit the houses of some of the real pioneers of fake news in the fairy tale community. Good morning everybody, it's Love Corner Journey to Story of the Glen. My name is Kendall, I'm your captain and storyteller of Fort Daisy. For your safety, please stay seated, keeping those hands, arms, fingers, feet and legs, toes, heads, arms, shoulders, That was one of our cast members, Huey, being a little bit over dramatical. But with all the personal problems in his personal life at the moment, perhaps we can forgive him. Well, 
here we are arriving at our fake news fairy tale community. Now the house coming up here on the right is the house of Red Hot Cinders. Yes, Red Hot Cinders is Cinderella's older and much more sexier sister. Yes, all the fairy tale princes have paid this house more than one visit, I can assure you. Some have made as many as up to six visits in one afternoon to Red Hot Cinder's house of ill repute. Now, as we pass under this bridge, you will see coming up on the left, the house of the three little wolves. Nice to see that it has been rebuilt to its former glory after the nasty big bad pig blew it down with one of its methane-induced flamethrower farts. Next we see the house of Jack and Jill. Yes, Jack and Jill, who went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down on top of Jill and got what he was after. Up there on the hill, we see the house of little Miss Muffet, who once sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and slipped one inside her. And now she's in the family way. So now she lives up there on the hill, far, far away with all the other single mothers. Now this mock palace we are passing on the right is where Goldie Socks and the three Randy Alligators live. Now this really is a house of ill repute. And why is this a house of ill repute? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Goldie Socks is a tart. That's why. Now the next house we are going to see is the house of Pigmella. Well, I say house, it's more of a cave actually. Pigmella was a royal princess who was accidentally switched at birth with one of Farmer Giles' baby piglets by an evil witch, which is the sort of thing evil witches do. And as Pigmella grows up on the farm, things don't turn out quite so well for her, because when she kisses a handsome frog, she gives birth to Pig Frogman nine months later. And he's so not a nice person. You know, half frog, half man, half Donald Trump. You get the idea. That lamp up there contains his hair gel. Now, as we continue along this lazy river, the next residence of interest will be Rob Go to Bed's holiday home. Well, I say holiday home, it's more like an over the top grand palace, and Rob only spends about two weekends a year there. Oh, look, there's Trisha Short Skirt's little cottage. Nice, isn't it? And there's the little granny house that Rob bought for his mother. Small, isn't it? Not like Rob's grand palace which is as big as Rob's ego. I mean, where does Rob go to bed get the money to pay for such an elaborate carbuncle of a monstrosity? Certainly not from Argos anymore. Oh look! There's my old family tree. Incidentally, do you know how a tree gets online? They just log in. Oh look, there's my old school. I got a terrible education there because it was a school for emotionally disturbed teachers. It's the only school I know of where we was given homework during sex education. Oh look, there's a choo-choo train. Puff puff, said Thomas. Looks like rain again, said the fat controller. Oh look. There's Mark Drakeford's castle. And there's Nicholas Sturgeon's holiday home, unless I'm very much mistaken. Oh, I just love bobbing along on the lazy river of life. It's just so enchanting. Don't you agree? And here we are entering It's a Tall World, which is probably my favorite of all the rides at Go to Bed World designed as it is to give visitors the experience of seeing the world from an ant's perspective. It's a Tall World is one of the most iconic attractions at Go to Bed World and just about everyone in Cricklewood has at least heard about it even if they couldn't be bothered to get up off their big fat bottoms and experience it for themselves. Here are some interesting facts and secrets that you may not know about It's a Tall World. The title song is sung in five billion different languages, including, unfortunately, Welsh. It's a Tall World is one of the few songs in the world not written by Rob Gotobed. And there are some animatronic ducks. This attraction has a unique fun feature, utilising the magic Gotobed bands. 
These magic go-to-bed bands enable you to personalise your experience at the end of the ride. Where Rob Go To Bed will personally run up and jump in your boat and wish you goodbye and good luck in a language of your choice. Obviously, this will be weather and restraining orders permitted. It's a tall world. And finally, 76 countries on show here are not officially recognised by Rob Go To Bed and therefore there are no Rob Go To Bed embassies based in any of those particular countries. It's a tall world. It's a tall world. The first country represented here on the left is Royal Greenland, where the national dish and speciality is undercooked fish. In fact, their whole diet consists of fish. Fish for breakfast, fish for dinner, and consequently, there's something very fishy about the contents of their underpants. Now here on the right, the country of Bulgaria is represented. Bulgaria is a very unique country and is home to some of the shortest people in the world. Here, the average height is just 4 foot 2 inches tall. Coming up on the left is the national dress of Kaiserstan, a unique country where 96% of the population are under 3 years of age. Next, we visit Wales, a deeply religious country, where, for example, you are only allowed to have sex on a Sunday if you don't enjoy it. It's a tall world after all. Next, we pay a visit to the Netherlands, or Holland, as it was known before it went decimal. Holland has more prostitutes than population. At the last count in 2020, there were at least four prostitutes for every person. It's a tall, tall world. Now, coming up on the left, we have the national costume of New Zealand. Ah, yes, New Zealand. Did you know that New Zealand has more toilets per house than any other country? Each house contains, on average, 16 toilets. That must say something about their cuisine. A tall world. A tall world. A tall world. In the hot air balloon, we have a couple of dolls wearing the French national dress. Did you know that the entire population of France are direct descendants from Genghis Khan and a woolly mama? That's absolutely true. Remember kids, your Uncle Rob never lies. And here we are at Venice. Did you know that Venice is one of the hottest cities on the planet? The temperature here is so high that there isn't a single drop of water to be found in the whole of Venice. Here on the left, we can see North Korea. Did you know that the fastest gust of wind ever recorded on Earth was recorded here? The gust of wind was recorded at 253 miles per second, which is quite staggering really, especially when you learn that the gust of wind emanated from King John Un's bottom. Probably had something to do with the fact that he had been eating nothing but North Korean sprouts and baked beans for eight weeks. Anyway, I'll shut up now for a while and let you all enjoy the ambience that comes with It's a Tall World. And why not join in with a song if you know the words?
the little mermaid there. I've had her, you know. Goes like a barn door in a hurricane. And here we are at Hawaii, which is one of the best places in the world to see rainbows. That is why the people of Hawaii are some of the happiest and richest in the world, because they have a higher chance than most of finding a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Next up, we visit sunny Canada. Ah yes, Canada. The only country in the world with the 1999 Nokia cell phone is still more popular than the iPhone. Ah, Canada. I tell you what I love about the Canadians is that they're just like the Americans, except nicer, more polite and with less guns. Finally, we arrive in the good old US of A. Did you know that the USA is home to the Grand Canyon? And did you know that the Grand Canyon is now over 70 million years old? Come to think of it, shouldn't we be calling it a Great Grand Canyon by now? <laughs> did you like what I did there? As we say farewell to It's a Tall World, prepare to be amazed, prepare to be stunned, prepare to be shocked, as we now go over live to the Simon Cowell Stunt Spectacular, where Simon Cowell attempts to pick up yet another television prime time Emmy Award for one of his so-called television shows. Did you know, viewer, that Simon Cowell is so rich that when he flies, his wallet is considered as carry-on luggage? And did you know that Simon Cowell is so rich that he thought Manuel Labour was a Spanish rock musician? And so, as the music changes and becomes a little bit more scary, we wait with anticipation and bated breath for Simon Cowell to make his big, over-the-top, very theatrical, dramatic entrance. Look kids, there's Simon now. Gosh, this is so exciting. See how Simon sets fire to 10,000 American dollars and uses it as a torch.
Oh look everyone, our Simon has spotted something. I wonder what it can be. Now it's starting to get exciting. Oh look everyone, there's the Primetime Emmy Award for Simon to collect. See how it glistens in the moonlight. Isn't that just typical? Just as you go to pick up your award, someone rolls a great big bowling ball at you. I hope he's okay. Yay! Our Simon is okay and lives to be a judge another day. Go to bed, world. It's where the real magic happens.